we have a very um, very small and narrow point of view of uh, hooligans you know we we still think they you know most of them are working class or unemployed alcoholic thugs and that's just not the case it's not as simple as that I teach history you teach yes cheeky slag history and PE what do you think the GSE paid a bloody wage mate I'm smart as fuck well, I've gotten involved in into the world of hooliganism, or I've gotten to know about it when I was a teenager. Um, you know, going to the football match, and then uh, you know, by coincidence, actually getting to know some of the guys in a firm. During the week, they were great guys and kind and smart and gentle, and they were good fathers, good brothers, good sons. Um, yet one day a week, on, you know, on the weekend, they wanted to beat somebody up, and that was their addiction and their high. There's something in the violence that is attracted to them. This sort of constantly teetering on the edge at any moment when you're watching a match and there's the other fans for the, you know, the supporter fans on the other side and they're jeering at you and you're jeering at them. It's so easy to get swept up into that. I think there's this uh, tribal thing that they like to experience. They like to be around a group of young men, you know, which I think is a very, you know, instinctive thing for boys to do and men to do. You are a fucking maniac, man. Look at me. Fair play, son. There's plenty of wood a bottle there, done a run of there, and you stood your ground. Good for you, I'm proud of you. Good. Who was he there? Who? Geez, you was just fighting. Oh. Jeremy Van fucking hold him. Don't you so proud, mate. Well, now we've all stopped kissing each other's ass. He's got a point out. <laughs> the first band you threw. Yeah. A little bit on the feminine side. What? Take it, gay. Little little bit, Larry on. Grayson. Larry, little bit, Larry, Larry Grayson. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You don't want to get pinched. They come from you know, not necessarily bad families or poor families, uh, but uh, dysfunctional families, you know. I, I could pretty much guarantee you that none of them had an available father who took them to a football game or spent any kind of quality time with them. So what do they do? They find a family outside their home because there's more consistency and stability in within their peers and within their firm than there is in their own home. Okay, what now, man? What's the plan? What do you really want? That's just a question. Listen, Carl, do you really expect me to unburden myself to you? You just show up and decide you're the dad again? Look, I, um, uh, I have to go to the London Times. <laughs> you're unbelievable. You know that? Is there someone I'd like you to meet? I'm not five years old anymore. It takes a little bit more to manipulate me. Just an old friend from my Tribune days, I thought. You thought all it takes is a handshake from the editor of the Times and I'll have my old life back? I think we tried to be as accurate as we possibly could um, and as brutal as we, as we could. I mean, I think some people have complained about the violence in the film, um, but we, you need to see that sheer brutality to understand what it is, the, the, the reality of what these people go through um, and the reality of their lives and how intense these fights can be and how much is at stake. We had this incredible fight trainer called Pat Johnson. He was the fight coach of Chuck Norris's fight team um, when they used to have fight tours where it was bare knuckle fighting and of the 198 bare knuckle fights he had, he won 196 in knockout. He had done uh, quite a lot of, of stunt choreography and fight choreography for some incredible films, Karate Kid being one of them. Well, I started training with him about three weeks before I went to England and that kind of became a part of my my journey into to becoming a part of this film um, was that initial kind of fight training. When I train people for films like this, I have to explain to them that a person who does a big action fighting film has to be in better physical conditioning than a world champion boxer. These kids in this film, in some of the fights that we have, they're going to last three or four days. Each day is 12 hours long. So they may end up fighting for 48 hours over a four-day period. 
you guys are making me look a hell of a lot better than I am. <laughs> and I, I do appreciate that. So if we keep the, more of the same thing going today, and we'll have tomorrow, and we'll be done with this, and we'll look for a, we'll look for another fight. There's no beauty competition there, and they're fighting. It all looked ugly. I tried to portray that in my film. You know, I tried as much as I could to keep any kind of beautiful fighting shot out of it, even though I was tempted once in a while. None of these guys are prize fighters. None of them are trained. It's a lot of beer and a lot of wild throws and stuff, you know? Trying to take fighters and train them to be fighters and then tell them look like you don't know how to fight and fight. It's a lot harder than you realize that it is. These kind of fights are so mad and manic and you're trying to get in as many punches as you can before somebody takes you out and there's no finesse to it. We've had uh, 70 people or 80 people in one fight and we've had no one injured except for someone who scraped himself on the ground. It's really been terrific. I stood with my brothers and awaited flood.